Hello everybody and welcome back for my biggest video ever. Seven years of VR games ranked is here and it includes over 200 games from every single VR platform. Since last year, I've added over 50 new games and I've rescored every single game based on the current competition and any new updates they've introduced. All game names, rating, and the platform will be on the screen throughout the entire video and we'll be moving upwards from C tier all the way to S tier titles. This video is obviously quite subjective, but I will break down my scoring system throughout each section. But before we continue, I would love to hear your number one favorite VR game down in the comments right now and make sure to sound off anytime you disagree with my opinion. Now there are of course links and timestamps if you want to skip ahead, but before we jump in, this video is brought to you by Kiwi Design, my favorite site for VR accessories. If you're looking for a charging dock, a leech strap, battery pack, upgraded hand straps, a link cable, a bungee system, or an array of different comfort options, Kiwi has you covered. They now make an elite strap that includes both enhanced speakers and an extra powerful battery pack. It's a must-have accessory for the Quest 2, plus it's super comfortable and extra durable. There's a link to Kiwi down in the description, and don't forget to use discount code MATEO311 for 5% off and to help support this channel. Okay, so let's start things off with the graveyard. Every year, I unfortunately have to report that a few more multiplayer games have gone offline. This year it happens to be Nerf Ultimate Championship and Echo VR. Echo VR was a huge blow to its massive online community because unlike most of these other titles, it was still quite successful. But moving on from the graveyard, we have the D tier games. Just like in school, a D is barely a passing score, landing somewhere between 65 and 70. These games are poor examples of their genre, usually have significant bugs, or are just all around mediocre with extremely short campaigns. So in most cases, you want to steer clear of these games, unless someone's basically handing them out for free. And first on that list is Thunder God. Cool graphics, but minimal mechanics and content. This wave shooter, or rather hammer thrower, lets you feel like you're wielding Thor's hammer until your arm hurts, and then you basically never play the game again. If you find the title on a super steep sale, maybe consider picking it up. And speaking of titles that should only be picked up on a steep discount, we have Wolfenstein Cyber Pilot. It's hard to imagine how 60 minutes of Nazi murdering via multiple different remote piloted mechs could be boring, but Cyber Pilot managed is to pull it off. All the visceral action you expect from a Wolfenstein title is missing, and the game remains one of my biggest disappointments. Another title that severely disappointed me was Awake In. This horror game looked extremely creepy, but poor performance, horrendous controls, bugs, and a slow start ruined the experience for me. Now they have improved some of these issues over time, but I'm still stuck on that first impression. Speaking of first impressions, right out of the gate, the Western-themed wave shooter Guns and Stories seems pretty cool. The cutscenes are a nice touch. It's fairly entertaining, but ultimately forgettable and quite repetitive. A similar title that replaces the Western theme and guns for castles and medieval weapons is Mace and Grace. Again, it's really fun to punch waves of incoming enemies. I do enjoy the humor and excessive gore, but there's nothing to really keep me playing this, and at most I might use it for something like a VR demo at a house party. Now, unfortunately, we're adding a few new games to this mediocre category. After Dark VR is actually a really cool VR experience, as it's designed to be a Dead by Daylight clone. Now the only problem is, there's absolutely no player base. So unless you have multiple friends who want to buy this together, it's not worth picking up. Additionally, the game is still a bit janky, which does dampen the overall immersiveness. And speaking of ruined immersion, Star Wars really dropped the pinball. I don't understand how you can make a VR pinball game and forget to include motion controls. Overall, the experience is just okay, and the best thing this title has going for it is the Star Wars nostalgia. But let's move on from games that are just passable and into some C-tier titles. The C-tiers would be your 70s, or rather your 7.0s, and these titles can definitely be good, but there's either some type of significant flaw, extremely short gameplay length, or it might just be all around mediocre. If you absolutely love the genre of game, you might enjoy these titles, but there's most likely better options out there. First up is the four-person co-op hack and slash Alt Airbreaker. This game gives an excellent first impression, featuring some cool mechanics, fast-paced combat, excellent graphics, a leveling system, and some fun co-op. Unfortunately though, after a few hours, this turns into an unbalanced grindy mess. There's definitely some potential here, but this game needs some reworking. And speaking of things being reworked, parts of the classic title The Blue have been made free to play. This grand underwater viewing experience now gives you one environment for free, and if you enjoy it, you can purchase the rest. It's a great way to showcase VR, but hardly constitutes as a game. But with the new introductory price tag of free, it's a great value and definitely worth checking out. And our next game that is just good is Rush. 
As the name says, Rush is supposed to be this adrenaline-filled wingsuit flying game. Unfortunately though, I just did not find it that immersive. Something like Richie's plank experience can oddly get the pulse up, but somehow flying over mountains in a wingsuit just didn't do much for me. I was a fan of the multiple different control options though. Next on our list is this year's first newcomer, Space Blockbuster. It's like physically jumping into a game of Brick Breaker, and it's definitely a fun, engaging experience. But outside of just some casual gaming, maybe showing it off at a house party, there was just nothing else pulling me back to this title. And if I was just looking to kill some time, there are better options. Speaking of better options for VR, I wouldn't recommend your first experience be a roller coaster or the title Epic Roller Coasters. The game itself is actually pretty cool, and you can pick it up for free, only paying if you want additional tracks. But Roller Coasters in VR is a recipe for motion sickness. After six years of playing VR games, I still find this title fairly uncomfortable. But I did feel completely comfortable throwing on a gi in Ninja Legends. This arcadey ninja fighting wave shooter is definitely fun to play. There's lots of cool weapons and special abilities to unlock, and there's excellent boss fights. They've added an archery section since launch, but it's still pretty shallow, and the combat isn't as good as some games that'll show up later on this list. Speaking of combat, let's become Batman, which is an absolutely amazing experience in VR. Unfortunately though, this is a bit more of an interactive story rather than an actual game. And while it does have some really cool moments, it's extremely short with no replayability. Batman had the potential to be something great, but like usual, the Dark Knight vanished on us mid-conversation. Now our next title is the Wave Shooter Raw Data. This was a very early VR title, and it tried to be a lot more than just a wave shooter by adding a full storyline and playable classes, plus a few on-rail segments, and areas of free locomotion. Unfortunately though, at its core, it's still very much a wave shooter. The main thing holding back this title is the $40 price tag. Now moving up the list a little bit this year is Aspire 1 VR Operative. This game promised to be Metal Gear Solid in VR, but failed to deliver. The launch was also unfortunately riddled with bugs. It has definitely improved since launch though, and there's now additional content. So if you're in desperate need of a stealth-based VR game, this is a decent option, but there are a few more later on in this video. Okay, so the next game on the list is going to be a bit controversial, as it has one of the largest disparities between the Quest and PC version I have ever seen. I'm talking about the action-adventure title Tarzan VR. When I played this on PC, I was truly impressed by the graphics. The running, climbing, swinging, and chest-beating mechanics were immersing me into this world, and overall I had fun with the game. But when the Quest version released at a later date, it was a significant downgrade. Those beautiful graphics were nowhere to be found, the already not great combat somehow felt worse, and I just couldn't get immersed into this world. So I'm putting up two separate scores for this one. Now since immersion is key to VR, that's why games like O-Shape can be so successful. Contorting your body into random shapes and then punching through walls is not only a fun mechanic, but it's also a fun spectator sport. Now there's other rhythm titles I prefer over this, mainly due to having different mechanics and a soundtrack more my style. But it's an excellent rhythm game alternative if you're looking for something different. Speaking of different, we have the tower defense title Ginny and Thacka. There's a large emphasis on dry humor here in both Monty Python style cutscenes and in-game narration. There's also some gesture-based spells that help make the game more immersive, but the humor was lost on me and I found this title to be a bit unbalanced. Now something else that was lost on me is the puzzle title Doctor Who The Edge of Time. While I enjoyed the storytelling and found the environments to be quite immersive, anything related to the TV series went over my head as I've never watched it, and mechanically this game felt like a first generation VR title. Initially I struggled with some controls more than I did the actual puzzles. Also some aspects felt frustratingly unintuitive, like the first puzzle where you need to find the code to a safe. I'm sure there's more enjoyment to be had here for Doctor Who fans, but for me it's not exactly what I'm looking for. Now a similar title that did appeal to me a bit more was The Twilight Zone. Based on the classic TV series, you get three separate intertwined stories. They each come with varying mechanics, like playing cat and mouse with some robotic enemies, battling creatures throughout the wasteland of Earth, and finally a trippy themed walking simulator where you've been abducted by aliens. Ultimately though, it's a mediocre experience with minimal mechanics and a forgettable storyline. I'm not exactly sure it lives up to the Twilight Zone name, and it feels like they've delivered three just okay mini games. Now, if you're looking for a deeper storyline, we have this Cronia Kronos alternate. You're thrown into a truly bizarre futuristic world where everyone is connected and crimes like murder should not be possible. Well, somehow it's happened and you're sent to investigate. Dyschronia is mainly a story-driven experience, so if you're struggling to get into it, it's just not going to be for you. 
And while I was intrigued to see where the old Dea storyline was going, Chronos Ultimate just didn't do it for me. Similar to how I felt about Shadowgate, this was a BR reworking of a classic adventure title. Unfortunately though, it was lacking immersion, the mechanics and puzzles were simplistic, and the combat didn't offer much either. There are some redeeming characteristics, and VR doesn't offer many experiences like this, but unless you absolutely love this genre, it's a little hard to recommend. Similar to the JRPG Sword Reverie, you're dropped into a beautiful fantasy world, combat has some fun mechanics, and there's a leveling system plus single player campaign. It just starts to feel a bit stale way too quickly. I liked a lot of what this title had to offer, but ultimately there were a lot of different games I would rather be playing. Like our next title, Pro's Enlightenment. This is a truly challenging puzzle title with a dark theme. The game takes place in two separate timelines, and it's just a really intriguing storyline. Now, if puzzles aren't your style and you're looking for combat, we have Arashi Castle of Sin. This revenge-fueled samurai stealth title has a lot to like. The levels are open with multiple avenues of approach. Your pet wolf is a badass, and stealth kills are truly satisfying. The sword fighting and AI can use some work though, and it's also a fairly easy game. But if you're not interested in a samurai fantasy world, we have two titles that try to emulate real life. Forever Bowl and Forever Darts do a great job of delivering a darts or bowling experience. It's just some good casual fun and a decent alternative for when you can't get out of the house. So if your life is missing more darts or bowling, these games should scratch that itch. Or we could say to hell with reality and just play a bunch of mini games with Sam and Max. In Sam and Max, this time it's virtual. If you're a fan of the cartoon duo, this game might have some extra appeal. Otherwise, it's just a few hours of casual fun. There's shooting galleries, escape rooms, something similar to a combination between Bop It and Simon Says, and it's all wrapped up in a cool little storyline. It just might be a little too casual or kid-friendly for the average user. And right around the same level of cartoony quirkiness is Captain Toonhead and the punks from outer space. This tower defense title will have you building up turrets and jumping right into the action to defend some cube-style creatures. The humor wasn't exactly my style, but I am a sucker for a tower defense, and this title did suck me in for multiple hours. But for those of you who need more action, we have Swords of Gargantua. This is a physics-based sword-fighting roguelite with some truly unique enemies. Since launch, they've added four-person co-op and new enemies, but this title gets quite repetitive and feels pretty shallow. Now, on the opposite side of that, we have Warhammer Age of Sigmar Tempest Fall, which has a great storyline and atmosphere, but the combat is lacking. The developers have released numerous patches since launch, which overall have improved things a bit, but the combat itself still holds this game back from being anything great. This had the potential to be something great, but it ended up falling short. If it continues to improve, it will also continue to move up this list for next year. And while we're moving up the list, we have the army-themed RTS Final Assault. If you ever played with Green Army Men as a kid, that's basically what this game is like. The RTS elements are quite simple, and you'll mainly be pushing your units down a few separate lanes, but there are a few standout moments like grabbing a plane out of midair and redirecting it to rain gunfire down on an unsuspecting enemy. You won't find many people these days playing it online, but for $9.99, it's a good way to scratch the RTS itch. Now, a completely unique title that's in its own category is Starship Commander Arcade. This is an interactive story that's controlled completely by your voice and a few head movements. You take control of a spaceship and your choices will guide the storyline. Unfortunately though, this game has a tragic history and even though its technology was winning awards and was highly praised, the studio could not find enough funding. So it ended up being a short arcade experience rather than an epic multi-hour adventure they originally planned. This story can be found in a documentary that's included with the game that I found to be very interesting, but to each their own, which is a perfect segue for for horror titles, starting with Wraith the Oblivion Afterlife. A little bit too slow at some points and a little bit too creepy at others keeps this game from mainstream appeal. I had to push through some slow story elements in the beginning. And then as I started getting more and more into this title, I also became more and more nervously uncomfortable. Ultimately, it wasn't for me, but for the horror fans out there, you should put this one on your list, along with the next title, Hinge VR. Hinge is a psychological horror that has you navigating an abandoned skyscraper, but something absolutely horrendous is going on. You're seeing creatures, getting memory flashbacks, gravity has a mind of its own, and you really don't know what to expect next. Now, this is also a great looking game, but unfortunately, it also has some significant performance issues. And to round out the horror titles, we have The Blair Witch, another psychological horror exploration title, which has you tormented by your own memories. 
Luckily though, as you search through the Blair Woods, you have a canine companion to help cut the tension. Now, horror titles aren't my go-to genre, but between these three games, there's something there for any horror fan. Now, if you wanted to take part in an anime story rather than a horror one, we have Alt Deus Beyond Kronos. This is basically a multi-hour interactive comic book with a high level of replayability. It's a very trippy and quite interesting story, and you'll get the pilot a giant mech, but the mechanics are minimal here, and you basically just make choices to direct the storyline. Overall though, I found it to be a very unique and entertaining title. Another entertaining title was the time-bending puzzler Time Stall. You'll get a cutscene where something goes wrong and your cruise ship robotic staff tries to go on a murder spree, but luckily you'll be able to stop time and then rearrange things to work out to your advantage. It's a cute, fun title, and sometimes that's all you need. But if you're looking to kick it up a notch, we have Airborne. Airborne has you flying around like Iron Man while taking out a never-ending onslaught of robotic enemies. You'll unlock new weapons and skills between runs, and flying around at breakneck speeds just feels so awesome. Sadly though, there's not much more to this game, and it's just a fun time killer. Now, if you still want to be agile but remain a bit more grounded, we have the parkour shooter Stride. When you get into a good rhythm, Stride feels fantastic, and it starts to live up to that claim of being Mirror's Edge in VR. While there are multiple different game modes to explore, this title is still very much in development. If you pick it up now, you'll most likely enjoy it, but you might want to wait for the finished product. But for now, plant those feet and put those guns away, because we're stepping into the arena with Iron Lights. This unique melee fighting title slows down time and has you taking turns at both offense and defense. You can't just wildly swing your weapons, and every time they make contact, they will shatter, and you need to reform them. It's a unique set of mechanics that just works well. There's also competitive multiplayer and a ton of different weapons to choose from. It's not my favorite melee title, but it's still a good option. And that's just like Ven VR Adventures, which isn't my favorite platforming title, but it's a good option. Ven has some really cool environments, the difficulty starts to creep up towards the end, and the title does throw a few surprises your way. I just found the combat and some of the sound design to be a bit lacking. Now, a title that I thought would be lacking but actually surprised me was Zombieland Headshot Fever. It's not quite an on-rail shooter or a wave shooter, but it plays like the classic House of the Dead titles. You'll enter a room, have to clear it of enemies, and then you could proceed forward. There's new weapons and upgrades to unlock, and there's a high emphasis on replayability. If your goal is just to pick up a fun shooter, you could do a lot worse than Zombieland Headshot Fever. And while we're on the topic of games that are just fun to play, we have Avicii Invector. This rhythm title is a port from the original flat screen version, which has you pressing keys to some music by the late DJ Avicii. You're also gliding along with the spaceship the entire time, so it makes this entire experience very chill. Now, the opposite of chill is Richie's Plank Experience. Now it's really much more of a mini game, but it's also one of a kind. The overall impact that this title can have on your senses, and it could trigger acrophobia in the bravest of us. Maybe it's not a top tier recommended title, but everyone needs to try it at least once. Unlike Medal of Honor, which some of us would be completely okay to pass on. Medal of Honor scores some points here, mainly due to the scope of the single player campaign and its relatively robust multiplayer. Unfortunately though, the campaign is unevenly paced, the Steam version is riddled with performance bugs, and the Quest version doesn't run that well. On top of that, the multiplayer is fairly dead at this point. So how did it make it this far up on the list? Well, for starters, we rarely ever get a full game in VR, and the campaign definitely has some moments later on in the game, but it's a strong mix of highs and lows. Now, if you strip away all the ambition that Medal of Honor had and just aim for a fun, quick story, you get Final Space. This shooter, based on the TV series, is a fun multi-hour distraction. If you're a fan of the show, I assume there's some extra value here, but knowing absolutely nothing about it, I still enjoyed my playthrough. Four-player co-op is also a rare treat in VR. So next on this list is the quirky nightmare known as Virtual Virtual Reality 2. This is a brand new title that actually released right before this video, and I was lucky enough to complete it in time. Virtual Virtual Reality 2 has you uploading your consciousness into a really quirky digital world, and then everything goes horribly wrong. This game is well-written and extremely self-aware, poking fun at things like the metaverse, and some levels are a quirky parody, mixing titles like Beat Saber with a meditation app. The title's really well done, but the quirky nature might not be for everyone. Now, a title that was aiming for mainstream appeal is Star Wars Tales from a Galaxy's Edge. For the most part, it is successful, but it's a bit of a bland shooter, and the best part is a small side mission where you take on the role of a Jedi. Now, this game really starts to come into its own in the Last Call DLC. From there, you get to take on the role of a Jedi, an assassin droid, and even a stormtrooper, and they kick the overall action up a notch. 
Unfortunately, though, you do need to make it through part one before you can play the second part. So I'm going to put two separate scores here. Now, while Tales from the Galaxy's Edge is fairly popular, I'm sure most people haven't heard of the next title, The Tale of Anogoro. This is a puzzle action adventure title that leaves you scratching your head and offers up epic boss fights. It's also a surprisingly good looking title with a unique fantasy setting and storyline. My only complaint was I occasionally got stuck and this title gets less and less exciting as time goes on. But if you're looking for a puzzle game with some action in it, check out The Tale of Anogoro. But if you prefer your puzzle games to be a bit more unique, I recommend Gadgeteer. It's the most strategic setup of dominoes you'll ever experience. And it's a lot more chill to play because when everything falls down, you don't have to go and manually pick it back up. So go turn the entire environment into one giant Rube Goldberg machine and watch some physics in action. But if you prefer the physics of boxing, we have Creed Rise to Glory. Inspired by the Creed movie, you can box your way through a single player campaign featuring Rocky Balboa, earn some calories with some training based mini games, and then finally jump online for some multiplayer PvP. My only complaint here is it's a little expensive for a rather short campaign, and the online player base has been dried up for quite some time, but that might change with their recent release of the Championship Edition. Now, if you prefer shooters, we have Arcanade. This neon-infused, Tron-inspired FPS title will have you blasting your way through retro-futuristic levels. There's three different game modes, including Endless, Arena, and Arcade, and there's difficulty levels from straight-up noob to hardcore player. So if you like high-action shooters, go check out Arcanade. But if you're looking to add more adventure in your shooter title, you absolutely have to check out Hubris. Hubris offers up some absolutely amazing VR graphics, plus a nice level of variety with swimming, parkour, and some pretty intense firefights. From a storytelling standpoint, there are a few standout moments, but overall it's forgettable. Unlike the rather intriguing storyline from Unbinary, this beautifully hand-drawn world has you solving puzzles, dealing with disagreeable robots, and an AI that likes to challenge you. It's a unique, fun, and rather intriguing experience, but the puzzles are all quite simplistic. But if it's complexity you want, we have Wands Alliance. This is an online 3v3 spell slinging shooter. There's multiple different classes, each with their own unique abilities, a customizable list of spells to unlock, and some fierce online battles. Unfortunately though, it wasn't enough to hold my attention for an extended period of time. After roughly 10 plus hours, I wanted more game modes and different levels. Now a much older title that managed to hold onto my attention for an extended period of time is Vanishing Realms. This is a classic VR RPG title that was quite frankly ahead of its time. It features collision-based combat, beautiful environments, and basically everything you'd want to see from an action RPG. It's just not a very long game, and the mechanics are quite simple. It was, however, one of my favorite original VR games, and there is a DLC package to expand the campaign. There's not a ton of VR RPG options out there, but even without any competition, it's still a solid game. And it's strange for me to put a game I enjoyed so much right next to a game that I didn't really enjoy that much at launch, and that's Warhammer 40k Battle Sister. This story-driven first-person shooter set in the Warhammer 40k universe failed to live up to my expectations. While I did enjoy it enough to play almost the entire title in just one day, the combat just came off as a bit bland and the graphics were immersion breaking. But since launch, they've greatly enhanced the graphics, introduced a co-op horde mode, dropped the price to $19.99, and we just got another update with new enemies and weapons. So while I still believe Warhammer 40k deserves a better game than this, this is still a fun and fairly lengthy campaign. Now, if we jump back to rhythm titles, we have Thumper. Thumper is mechanically similar to Avicii and Vector, which we already covered, but it has no chill. The overall tone, effects, music, and giant enemy looming above you is all very aggressive. It's also a great challenge that'll definitely raise your pulse, but at the same time, it's extremely satisfying when you nail the moves. And while the game doesn't make great usage of motion controls, VR does make it that much more intense. And since we like things intense, let's jump into Doom VFR. Now I've revisited this title since last year and it has moved up the list a little bit because a good portion of the launch bugs have been resolved. Now while this is a solid shooter, it just doesn't feel as action oriented as those new Doom titles. Mechanically, it's also lacking a bit, and I just didn't feel like I was that all-powerful Doom guy. And speaking of not exactly feeling the role, in Phantom Covert Ops, I didn't feel like this unseen special operative. To me, it felt a bit more like hide-and-seek canoeing. That being said, though, there are some cool elements in this title, and it can be quite immersive. A six-plus hour-long campaign is a lot more than we usually get in VR, and post-launch, they added some trials that help with replayability. Now, I wasn't the biggest fan at launch, but this title did grow on me a bit over time. Now, if you want to unload those guns and pack a fishing rod in the canoe instead, we have real VR fishing. 
As someone who doesn't enjoy fishing, I was blown away at just how entertaining this title can be. Truly immersive, lifelike environments, mixed with fun fishing mechanics, and the ability to hang out with your friends. If it came with a six pack and a beer helmet adapter for your quest, this game would be like a 9.0. All jokes aside, it's an experience that basically anyone can enjoy, and if you want to up the challenge, you could turn off all of the visual indicators, making this much more true to life. But this is virtual reality, so who's looking for a real life experience? Instead, let's head to a Soviet space station with Jupiter Grad. Jupiter Grad is a grappling hook platformer with a great sense of humor. Unfortunately for you, this abandoned space station is quite deadly. The swinging mechanics in this title are excellent, and post launch, they've added time trial levels for those of you master the art of the grappling hook. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised with this title. Another surprise delight was Poker Stars VR. For the low, low price of free, you'll get your own private casino where you could join your friends or some random other players for a few games of poker. And to help keep things exciting, there's unlockable items and cosmetics. Plus, they've added additional games like roulette and slot machines. So if you need a quick trip to the casino, go download this game. Now, another place where you could find some treasure is one of VR's only MMO titles, Zenith. Glide your way into this fantasy setting, battle enemies with either swords or spells, and grind your way up to max level and unlock the top gear. That's the basic gist of any MMO. And Zenith also offers up a couple of additional features, including a cooking system, owning pets, and full body tracking. Now, coming from a long history of playing every MMO out there, I found Zenith to be a bit too shallow, but if you do end up liking this game, you might find yourself addicted. And sometimes it's just simplicity that keeps you addicted, and that's why I enjoy Drums Rock so much. Grab your drumsticks and battle some demons by perfecting your rhythm. You could also get some additional style points by flipping your sticks. And this game has an absolutely hardcore soundtrack and a cameo by yours truly. But if the drums aren't for you, why not build a cute little city in Little Cities VR? This is the absolute chillest city building experience. It's all about instant gratification and just watching your world come to life. There's no deep challenges here, and keeping your citizens happy is pretty straightforward. But there's just something about this game that'll suck you in, and before you know it, you've gone and populated all the islands. But I know this gameplay is too peaceful for some VR gamers, and that's why we have some stealth-based action from Aspire 2 VR Operative. While the original game was definitely not my favorite, I enjoy everything they've added to the sequel. There's a completely new campaign that can be played in both single-player or co-op. You'll take control of two completely different robotic chassis, one specializing in stealth and the other combat, and there's a huge amount of strategy on how to tackle each level. So if you're looking for either a co-op campaign campaign or some stealth based action, go check out Aspire 2. Now, if you want to up the action and bring more than one friend, we have Gambit. Gambit is Borderlands meets Left 4 Dead, filled with plenty of vulgarity and fast paced action. There's four separate characters to choose from, each with their own special abilities, a huge array of different weapons to unlock and upgrade, plus some really quirky cutscenes. Now, this title was delayed a few times and finally released recently, but it's still a little bit too buggy. But if you're looking for a streamlined adventure, we have Eye of the Temple. This game is uniquely VR and basically puts you into the shoes of Indiana Jones. You'll have to jog backwards on logs and use your whip to fend off creatures in this platforming puzzle title. Overall, it really reminds me of this old Nickelodeon game show, Legends of the Hidden Temple. Kids would run, jump, and climb through a temple-themed maze, all while avoiding traps, looking for treasure, and avoiding enemies. And that's basically what this game is. The title gets high marks for originality, and I've never played another platformer where I was the one physically jumping. But if that doesn't sound like it's your style, let's head back to RPGs with Vengeful Rights. Vengeful Rights is the full package. There's a full storyline, physics-based sword fighting, an RPG system, gesture-based spellcasting, and basically everything else you would expect in an RPG. It's quite similar to Vanishing Realms, but with enhanced mechanics. Graphically, the game's not the best looking, and it can still feel a bit low budget at times, but it's still a great VR RPG option. Now, if you don't care about RPG elements and just want to bash in some skulls, we have Gorn. Gorn is a slapstick, physics-based arena fighting game. It's extremely cartoony, but at the same time, gruesomely brutal. It's one of the most cathartic VR games I've ever played, and also most likely the number one cause of VR-related accidents and bodily harm. My only real complaint is I generally like my games a bit more serious, and it does get a bit repetitive, but it's undeniably fun. 
Now, if Gorn is too cartoony for you, we have Swordsman VR. This is a title that significantly improved since launch, added additional content, and became a very solid arena fighting title with multiple different factions to choose from, RPG elements, and even a little bit of magic. At launch, the combat was a bit lame, but it's definitely a lot more fun now. Speaking of fun, you guys have to check out Megaton Rainfall. It's a truly one-of-a-kind VR title that basically has you becoming a god. It starts with a truly immersive flight around the planet and into space, and then moves into you gaining some powers and having to protect the city from alien invaders. It's a total power trip and a great use of VR mechanics, but overall it's a short game and a bit simplistic. Now if Godhood isn't your objective and you're just looking for a lot of fun content, we have Dash Dash World. This is a Mario Kart style racing game with a huge amount of unlockables, plenty of single player missions, and 8 player online PvP. It just recently came out of early access, and with full release they introduced a new virtual steering system, 2 new weapons, and 7 new tracks. They also have upcoming tournaments planned for the future. So if you're looking for something similar to Mario Kart, here you go. Okay, so the next title is a little hard for me to rank. While I do love it and play it every single day, it's not exactly a game and it's also a subscription service. I'm talking about the workout application Supernatural, which I have been using for nine weeks straight, and my only complaint is that subscription price tag, but that's a necessary evil for all the included licensed music and the digital coaches. But for 180 bucks a year, you can get a full gym membership. It's undoubtedly fun cardio though, and there is a free trial if you want to find out if it's right for you. Speaking of games that are right for you, Defector tried to be a jack of all trades, but mostly ended up being just good at some things. It's an over-the-top 007 style game with everything from dialogue choices that alter the storyline, minor puzzles, a fantastic interrogation scene, and a level that's basically a first-person shooter. But like I said, it doesn't master any of these and ends up being just good. Sometimes good is all you need, and that's how I felt about the roguelite shooter Sweet Surrender. There's an excellent arsenal of weapons, you have VR's favorite utility, a grappling hook, and the game is action-packed, so you don't really need much more. If you enjoy this style of game, you can lose yourself in it for countless hours. Now we have a few more titles on the edge of greatness, and the next one is Cities VR. Not to be confused with Little Cities VR, Cities VR is an adaptation of the flat screen titles City Skylines. It brings with it that extreme level of complexity and some extremely challenging gameplay. If you want to build a city of your dreams, it's going to take work, proper planning, and a high level of resource management. Now the quest version of Cities VR leaves something to be desired, as the graphics are extremely bland, and there's a high reliance on foveated rendering, so if you have the option, I recommend you check out this game on PSVR 2. Now if that's too much challenge for you, we have a brand new rhythm shooter, Gun Jam. The gameplay of Gun Jam is very similar to Pistol Whip, but the mechanics do vary, there's more emphasis on keeping a beat, and this title has a completely different artistic style. If you're itching for an action-oriented rhythm game, Gun Jam is a no-brainer. But if you're looking for a story-driven stealth title, we have The Republic. This is one of the very few third-person games that exist in VR, and you'll have to sneak past guards, unlock security terminals, and use security cameras to your ultimate advantage. There's a truly deep storyline here set in a dystopian future world, and there's nothing else quite like it available in VR. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention this game is free. But if you enjoy the more traditional games, we have Alvo VR's Call of Duty. This online shooter is exactly what you're expecting. There's multiple different weapon loadouts to equip, unique perks, and the classic gameplay shooter modes. So go ahead and get your online shooter fix with up to 10 player combat. Now, if you want to add some co-op into the mix, we have yet another shooter with zero caliber. This is an action-packed story-driven VR adventure title that is a single player campaign that you could also experience in co-op. And when you're done with that, you could jump online for some PVP. Now, I stick to single player games quite often, and that's why I truly enjoyed Runner. This futuristic motorcycle title reminded me of a modern version of Spy Hunter. While the combat is fast paced and arcadey, it's also quite challenging. Death will have you starting over from scratch, making every boss encounter or minor health reducing mistake that much more tense. While the challenge level might not be appropriate for everyone, it's a truly fun and highly stylized experience. But VR is a lot more than just gaming, and that's why I recommend the workout title Les Mills Body Combat. It's one of the non-subscription based titles, making it a lot more appealing, and there's some excellent workout routines and good enough music. If you value the quality of workout above all else, Les Mills Body Combat is an excellent title to help you reach some of your fitness goals. And our last title in the C tier is Broken Edge. This unique sword fighting experience has some rather interesting mechanics and a gorgeous neon stylized world. There's multiple characters to choose from, each with their own unique weapons and power-up method. You're tasked with destroying your enemy's sword, 
prior to moving in for the ultimate kill. There's a surprising amount of strategy and some fairly intense gameplay. So if you're in the market for a competitive sword fighting title, check out Broken Edge. And now we've made it up to the B tier games. These score between 8.0 and 8.9, and they're usually a great example of their genre. And while they're not exactly the best of the best that BR has to offer, most people will enjoy these games. And first on that list is Walkabout Mini Golf. Walkabout Mini Golf is probably the only virtual activity that is more fun than the real life version. The physics, however, are extremely true to life because I suck just as much in a virtual game of mini golf as I do out in the real world. But joking aside, this game features some amazing mini golf courses, and it's just a fun, chill experience that you could share with a bunch of friends. But who wants to chill when you could be out there killing virtual monsters? Hell Split Arena allows you to do just that with both fantastic graphics and some excellent physics. Last year, I placed this title right next to Gorn, but the title has significantly improved and they've added jousting, which makes it that much more extreme. If you're looking for a mature themed and brutal arena fighting game, this is the one for you. But not everything can be blood and guts and sometimes you need some one-on-one -on -one action and that's where Blaston comes in. Also moving up the list this year, this truly unique 1v1 shooter has received multiple updates. There's now new game modes, additional weapons, a single player campaign, and a player hub to hang out in. It's also surprising to see just how much strategy is involved in this game. It might look like just grabbing guns and dodging bullets, but there's a lot more to it. Now, another game that has you grabbing guns and dodging bullets is the Roguelite Compound. Now, this is very similar to Sweet Surrender, except it has a much more retro art style. While it might be lacking a grappling hook, this game also has an excellent arsenal and a great feel to it. Now, this game has technically been in early access for almost four years, but it's still receiving updates. And as it improves, I will continue to push it up my list. Speaking of games moving up the list, Lies Beneath has also been bumped up a few points. I originally played this game on the quest right after Half-Life Alex, and that's the main reason why I found it lacking. But a quick revisit on the PC VR version, and I understood what everyone was saying in my comments from last year. This is a solid horror title with plenty of action. It also features some excellent comic book style graphics and immersive sound design. But if the horror theme is too much for you, and you rather play with some action figures, we have Yuki. Yuki is an excellent bullet hell roguelite that makes you feel like a kid holding your favorite action figure. And best of all, the more you play, the more you get to update it. It's easy to get immersed in this game as you're dodging bullets, enemies, and obstacles, and trying to blast everything out of the sky at the same time. Now, if you're looking for even more of a challenge, we have Drop Dead the Cabin. You'll find yourself trapped in an experimental lab with hordes of creatures coming to kill you. You'll need to keep your comm system up and running to make sure an evac comes your way. You'll also need to strategically unlock new weapons and equipment because resources are rather limited. Now, luckily, you could bring a friend along to help you survive, but this game is designed to be extremely difficult and offer up maximum replayability. And speaking of replayability, our next title, Arc Axer, is extremely extremely unique. You'll jump between an isometric and first person mode, battle enemies in turn-based combat that still requires you to physically dodge attacks and attack your enemies with motion controls. The campaign is extremely lengthy and there's an excellent leveling system. Overall, it's an extremely unique VR RPG title. But if you prefer more of a dungeon crawler, we have Ancient Dungeon. This roguelite experience offers over 20 hours of procedurally generated gameplay. And while the Minecraft style graphics may not look great on flat screen, they actually really shine in VR. So jump on in and slash away to discovering over 125 powerful relics. But if you prefer to fight against the elements, we have Green Hell. This survival title places you deep in the Amazon jungle and expects you to fend for yourself. You'll need to forage for food, build weapons and shelter, and defend yourself against the Amazon's indigenous people and dangerous wildlife. This title's not for the squeamish, and before you're done, you'll die in a multitude of different ways. And speaking of dying, the classic boomer shooter shock troops is guaranteed to get you killed a few times. It's an amazing nod to old school shooters like Duke Nukem 3D. There's a large array of enemies in different environments, and the pacing on this title is very different than many modern shooters. If you're like me and grew up on titles like Duke Nukem 3D, you're sure to love Shock Troops. But if you prefer something that's just all around different, when it comes to racing games, Z Race is definitely unique. There's a huge selection of YouTuber themed racing cars, all of which can be updated over time, and a series of futuristic tracks for you to master. It's an addictive gameplay loop, and I couldn't stop until I maxed out the Mateo 311 car. Another title that sucked me in in a similar manner is Iron Guard. While this tower defense title is quite simple, I just really enjoy it. The campaign is over 10 hours long, and they go the extra mile with fully narrated cutscenes. 
Mechanically, it's a little simplistic and it takes a while before the game starts to get difficult, but I love building the perfect defensive strategy and then leveling up between missions, unlocking new weapons and special skills. There's not many tower defense titles available in VR, so this is easily one of the best recommendations but Guardians might be an even better option, even though it's not only a tower defense title. It's almost like a tower defense RTS first person shooter hybrid set in a world similar to Starship Troopers. You could play it single player or with up to four people online, and the game will have you gathering resources, building defenses, controlling armies, and even riding in vehicles. There's also an excellent assortment of weapons to unlock and the jetpack. What more do you really need? I don't know, maybe a storyline? Well, Hellblade has you covered there. This absolutely gorgeous third person action puzzle title works surprisingly well in VR. It's a dark storyline centered around mental illness, which literally and figuratively has you fighting demons. This was the first title to figure out how to integrate flat screen cutscenes, and overall it's just an intense experience. Now if that doesn't sound like your style, maybe you'd be more interested in cards and tankards. This free trading card title allows you to jump in game, meet some people, grab a table, and battle it out with some Magic the Gathering style cards. I found deck building and implementing new strategies to be quite addictive, and the game does have a pretty solid community. I actually never played any card games prior to this, yet I still found myself oddly addicted. Now another board game style experience that caught me by surprise is Table of Tales, The Crooked Crown. This is like your very own personal one-shot D&D campaign narrated to you by a close friend. While mechanically the gameplay is much simpler than something like Dungeons and Dragons, it has a very similar feel and tells a truly compelling story. It's also just really cool to watch the board come alive and have all the little characters moving around. It's an easy recommendation to tabletop RPG fans. But if you're not a fan, we can always go back to killing zombies in Arizona Sunshine. This story-driven zombie shooter is playable in both single player and co-op, and it's received numerous DLCs over time, including a really fun horde mode. Unlike many other VR games, it's the full package. It's just showing its age a little bit, as it's definitely not one of the best looking games, especially on the quest. Maybe it's destined to move down a few notches in the future, but that's not the case for our next game, Synth Riders. Originally, Synth Riders felt like a decent alternative to Beat Saber for me, but as you play, you realize it's quite different, and instead of just slicing stuff, it gets you to naturally move to the beat of the song. But what really sold me on this game were their new immersive experience songs, which are just mind-blowing. I'm not a big rhythm genre fan, but I find myself playing that algorithm experience at least once a month. So if you're looking to move on from Beat Saber, you might want to consider this game or our next title, Pistol Whip. Now, last year, this game didn't even make it onto my list because I wasn't really feeling it, but the 2089 and Smoke and Thunder updates really sold me. I love everything about them, from the cutscenes to the different graphical styles, the weapon modifications, and the included music. While I still have a little bit of trouble connecting to the music compared to other rhythm games, this game is just oozing with style, and getting to feel like John Wick is more up my alley. And another title that's right up my alley is Grapple Tournament. This Unreal Tournament-inspired multiplayer shooter is just plain excellent. Excellent graphics, it's super fast-paced, a strategic assortment of different weapons, and we also get a grappling hook. The only thing holding back this game is the low player count. Luckily though, you can now pick up a free demo from the Oculus App Lab, and it will eventually get a full quest release. And another game that's going to need a quest release to pump up the multiplayer numbers is the online sword fighting title Swords of Gura. With a large assortment of melee weapons, and game modes like a 12 person free for all, team deathmatch battles up to 6v6, and even some capture the flag, this is an excellent melee experience. There are some unique sword shattering and blocking mechanics, but this game really needs to hurry up and release on the quest, because unless you go to their Discord and plan out some matches, it's pretty hard to find a game. Now, if you'd rather keep your sword fighting to single player, we have Journey of the Gods. This is a light RPG title that makes great usage of VR, allowing you to transform into a towering entity. There's a cool storyline, physics-based combat, excellent boss fights, and some additional surprises along the way. If you're looking for a light RPG, it's an easy recommendation. Now, if you'd rather just get your heart pounding, we have Thrill of the Fight. Just get in the ring and stop beating up some enemies. That's it. It's really simple, but this game delivers. 15 minutes in, you will be covered in sweat and wondering if you're actually in a real fight. There's some awesome effects when you take a solid hit, and it's always great to give your enemy a black eye or soften him up and watch him drop his guard. Forget Supernatural or any other fitness apps, this might be all you need. But if that's too intense, we have some fun house party games to check out. Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is about as unique as a VR game can get. One person will be in VR attempting to defuse a bomb, while everyone else in the room will attempt to give some defusal instructions. 
But to make matters worse, everything is designed to be as confusing as possible, and multiple different things are competing for your attention. If you haven't experienced this game, or you're looking for a party title to play, I highly recommend it. But right above that, I would recommend Takeling's House Party. Up to eight people can take on the role of these creatures known as Takelings by using either a traditional game controller or their cell phone. Some game modes will have the VR user attempting to kill all the Takelings, and they can band together and fight back, while other modes will have the Takelings in direct competition. This is honestly my favorite party title, and I think everyone needs to try it. But many of us are lacking friends and only stick to single player, so we have a truly unique rhythm title against. Against is like a combination of Pistol Whip, Beat Saber, with a drop of stride thrown in there. And rather than slicing down blocks or pixelated creatures, there's some awesome comic book style fantasy creatures for you to mow down and chop in half. It's an excellent take on the rhythm genre for those of us looking for something a bit more gritty. Now another gritty option is Sniper Elite VR. Travel back to Italy during World War II and basically become a one-man army. The Sniper Elite series is known for that x-ray kill cam, and it's even more brutally satisfying in VR. A lengthy cam campaign, compelling storytelling, and lots of Nazi murdering make this a very solid title. Now if you are looking for a bit more emotion in the storytelling, we have Stormland. This single player shooter is also playable in co-op, and it sets you down a path of uncovering what happened to this mysterious planet you're on. As a robotic unit that was damaged and out of commission for quite some time, you're not only rebuilding your memories, but upgrading your chassis. With excellent locomotion mechanics and fun combat, Stormland is definitely a fun title, albeit a bit too repetitive. But repetition can be okay if the gameplay loop is on point, and that's exactly what our barrier brings to the table. This title feels like Clash of Clans meets a melee brawler. You'll be leveling up your champion, sending him against realms that online players have created, and gradually unlocking new power-ups, powerful new weapons, and a large array of minions and traps for you to use in your own realm. Whenever you're offline, your character will be controlled by the AI, and you can watch a full replay of anyone who tried to invade your realm. This title offers up so many different mechanics, and it's also highly strategic with an absolutely addictive gameplay loop. Just like our next shooter, Mother Gunship Forged, this is a combination roguelike bullet hell with a truly unique weapon building mechanic. There's a huge array of different bullets to fire, power-ups to apply, and you can even utilize both a shield and chainsaw. The uniqueness of these weapons makes every run feel fresh and new, and there's even an online competitive mode or campaign co-op. There's plenty of options and replayability, and that's why it actually surpassed Space Pirate Trainer as my favorite wave shooter. Now, if you're looking for both a top-notch single-player campaign and some highly competitive online PvP, look no further than the mech piloting title, Vox Machine. The single-player storyline has you going on a series of unique missions, that introduces a brand new warring faction that seemingly comes out of nowhere. The storyline strikes a nice balance between being quirky and fun and giving us some compelling action. And that action also includes some highly competitive online PvP and co-op modes. Now you'd expect after seven years, we'd have a lot of mech titles in VR, but Box Machine is the best of a very short list. Now when it comes to roguelikes, the VR list definitely is not short, but luckily the Light Brigade stands out. You'll be utilizing realistic World War II style weaponry, plus a unique combination of magic abilities. The world has been overtaken by darkness, and you're the only one who could bring back the light. Mechanically, this title is solid. Graphically, this is a highly immersive world to explore. Combat feels unique, and the random power-ups keep things exciting. It also feels much more like you're playing a single-player campaign rather than a traditional roguelike. Now, if we break from tradition and try and make a title that only works in VR, we get Swarm. Swarm easily has some of the best grappling hook mechanics, and you're definitely going to need it because there is no ground in this game. You'll continually swing from platform to platform while taking out waves of enemies and picking up some truly powerful secondary weapons. This title is filled with epic boss fights, a significant challenge, hours of gameplay, and even some cutscenes. There are some multiplayer modes currently in development, and if they're successful, I wouldn't be surprised for this title to move up the list for next year. But a wave shooter that still holds a special place in my heart is Space Pirate Trainer. I love the mechanic of pulling a shield out from over your shoulder, switching to the proper weapon based on the enemy you're fighting, and even dual wielding some weapons for an extra power boost. The soundtrack always gets me pumped, the main boss is an epic battle, and their arena update is absolutely game-changing. So now, not only do you have a super fun single-player shooter, you also have an online, co-location, 1v1 multiplayer title. The only issue there is you need a really large play space. So if you only have a small amount of room available, maybe the RTS title Battlegroup VR is more suited to your play space. This space battle title is currently the most in-depth VR RTS available. It features a full single player campaign, full customization of both your ship captains and your fleet, which comes in the form of special power-ups, weapons that specialize in either dealing hull damage or shield damage, 
Trade-offs between speed, all strength, and shields, giving you a ton of customization options. There's also online competitive multiplayer and the ability to use voice commands. And the game also just happens to have amazing graphics. So this is easily my top pick for VR RTS titles. Now some VR shooters that tend to go under the radar these days are the Serious Sam titles. There are now VR versions of these titles available, and unlike some other ports, these work amazingly well. It's non-stop fast-paced action with tons of enemies on screen and excellent graphics. There's also a ton of content available, multiplayer gameplay modes, and I have to mention that the scale of the enemies in this game just looks fantastic. Now, some of these old school titles remain my favorite VR shooters, and that's the case for the next title, Super Hot. Super Hot is an extremely unique shooter. Enemies will only move when you move, turning this into almost a puzzle title. Between limited weapons and ammo to use, plus enemies approaching in unexpected ways, creates a lot of trial and error to pass a sequence. There's also a bit of quirky VR inside a VR game storyline going on. And the only thing holding back this title is the rather short gameplay length. There's definitely some replayability here, but most people want more content. Now, one of my favorite shooters with a lot of replayability is Robo Recall. The mechanics behind this title truly shine. Not only are you decommissioning hordes of robotic enemies, but you're also rewarded for doing it in style. Bounce a weapon off the enemy to automatically reload it, catch a bullet in midair and throw it back at the enemy, or just rip off some limbs. The options feel limitless, and every time you play a level, you'll earn some points to help you upgrade your weapons. I still absolutely love this game and have been waiting years for a sequel. But instead, we did get some other surprise hits like Frack. This shooter's like starring in a Vin Diesel movie that's a mixture between Fast and Furious and Borderlands. Ski right into the action with an avalanche chasing behind you, then crash land without injury right where you needed to be. Frack is not only one of the best shooters I've played on the PlayStation VR, it's also one of the best looking games. The one crux, like many other VR games, is the short gameplay length of just a few hours. But if you're not interested in that over-the-top adrenaline-filled action and are aiming for some realism, we have Onward. Onward is VR's undisputed military sim. It's completely unforgiving and strides for realism when it comes to equipment and weapon handling. No cursors, button reloads, or any of that nonsense. We are training you for war. Now, while some people might prefer something more arcadey, if you're looking for realism, this title can't be beat. But VR doesn't need to be realistic, so let's take a time-traveling journey with Wanderer. What immediately stands out in this title is the production value. This is a great looking game with beautifully immersive environments, high quality voice acting, and brain straining puzzles. If this is the type of game you're looking for, it's a fantastic option and a close tie with the gallery episodes one and two. As an older title, it's not quite the same quality as Wanderer and the puzzles aren't as challenging, but I found this storyline a bit more compelling and it took some really crazy turns that I was not expecting. And this is yet another title that I would love to see a sequel to. Now, if you prefer a story that's set in an existing IP, we have Westworld Awakenings. As a huge fan of the show, I thought the storyline was worked in perfectly and mechanically, this game plays just like one of my favorite horror titles, Outlast. Love it or hate it, horror always works so well in VR. And there's a series of surprises that just works in perfectly well with the lore behind Westworld. Now, if you're not interested in horror, but still looking for some adrenaline, we have The Climb 1 and 2. I dragged my feet on this title for quite some time because I expected it to bore me. Who knew that beautiful environments and well thought out climbing mechanics would turn into a fantastic VR title. It's almost oddly addicting and the perfect level of effort is needed to play this game. So you still feel active, but you're never really getting tired. The Climb 2 could have basically been a DLC as not much has changed, but if you like the original, you're getting more of the same. Now, a title that's almost completely alone in its own category is the co-op RPG Carnage Chronicles. Beautiful graphics, physics-based combat, two different classes, excellent storytelling, and lots of epic loot to find make this a fantastic game to play. In single player, it feels much more like a refined melee title where every single strike counts and you really need to time those blocks and counter attacks. In co-op, it turns into a bit of a chaotic dungeon crawler, but either way, it's still a fantastic experience. And speaking of fantastic experiences, we have Valve's free title, The Lab. The Lab is a collection of mini games designed to show off just how cool VR can be, highlighting everything from immersion to mechanics. You'll get to meet Gladys and other robots up close and personal, take in some beautiful vistas, put your archery skills to the test, or explore space, and this is only a few of the mini games available. If you haven't tried it, you definitely need to, and it's also a fantastic way to introduce people to VR. Another excellent free option is Rec Room. Not only does it have a huge player base, tons of different gameplay modes, everything from RPG style quests, the laser tag, car racing, and battle royale. There's tons of ever-growing unlockables and a pretty insane amount of player-generated content. 
content. There's definitely a younger audience here, but as an old guy, I still enjoy this game. But if you really want to lose yourself in VR for an extended period of time, you should check out No Man's Sky. This bomb of a launch turned comeback kid became an extremely anticipated VR title. While the VR launch had some rough edges, it's definitely improved over time, and there's just so much to do in this title, everything from planetary exploration to space fights, or just sitting back and building a base. And I really enjoy the option that I can switch back to flat screen at any time if I feel the need. Now, for whatever reason, I actually enjoy base building in the forest a bit more than No Man's Sky. Sure, there's a bit less to do in this game, but it doesn't matter if I enjoy it all the more. Being stranded on an island with creepy ass mutant cannibals definitely keeps you on your toes, especially in VR and being able to play this online with your friends not only helps cut the tension, but also helps you build some epic structures so much faster. Now, you wouldn't have been stranded on this island at all if you learned to fly by yourself, and you can do that with VTOL. VTOL is a fighter pilot sim that is a great balance between realistically challenging and just some arcade fun. Don't get me wrong, it's still pretty complex, but it's definitely not as hard as learning to fly a real jet. They've recently added multiplayer missions, a dual seat helicopter, and this game also has Steam Workshop integration for users generated content. As someone who's not really a sim fan, I was surprised at how much I truly enjoyed this game. And speaking of really enjoying games, we have Hyperdash and Larsenot. Larsenauts is a hero shooter similar to Overwatch, with some excellent different characters to choose from, and some excellent VR mechanics. Issues like the completely broken Steam release and non-immersive weapons have been resolved in some recent patches, and overall it still has a fairly active community. Unlockable characters and upgrades will keep you coming back for more, but I don't actually need that and prefer Hyperdash a little bit more than Larsenauts. The varying gameplay modes, non-stop action, powerful weapon pickups, and the ability to perform some teleportation jumps makes for some excellent combat. There's some definite strategy here, and the developers have continued to push content since the release of this game. From a mechanical standpoint, this is my favorite VR multiplayer shooter. Well, let's completely change the tempo with the quirky puzzle title, I Expect You to Die. This is a series of spy-themed escape rooms where trial and error is key, and a funny death is around every corner. They've managed to prevent the frustration of repeat failure by making every death hilarious. Open up your glove box. Uh-oh, there's a bomb in there. Smoke a cigar? Yeah, there's a bomb in there too. Basically, the first time you touch anything, it kills you. Now, another game that likes to kill you, but never in a fun way, is The Persistence. This horror-themed roguelite has you on a derelict space station where the cloning systems are malfunctioning and pumping out monstrous creatures. You can harvest their DNA for upgrades, roll the dice for some risk versus reward exploring, and ultimately try not to poop your pants because most of these creatures are horrific. This was originally a PlayStation VR title, so there are some port issues with other versions, like no hand tracking, but it's a great game nonetheless. Now you can't mention great VR game without me saying Until You Fall. Another roguelite title, but this one has some unique melee combat. You'll have to learn and block a series of attack patterns and then strike back at those most opportune moments. Stronger enemies will also have more powerful attacks that you either need to duck or dodge out of the way. This game is both a physical and mechanical challenge, which will have you dying constantly and breaking into a full sweat. Luckily though, you can unlock new weapons and upgrade them between each run. Now, if you don't want to get up close and personal and prefer to sneak around, I recommend Budget Cuts too. I never played the original title, and I was shocked to see the main mechanic for this game is actually stealth. Back when the main method of locomotion in VR was teleportation, Budget Cuts came up with an elegant solution with some portal-like teleportation windows. You can clearly see where you're going to end up, and then you just pull yourself through. This is ideal for sneaking up behind enemies or scoping out areas of the map that you can't currently see. There's also some challenging puzzles and combat, a fun storyline, and a bit of surprises along the way. Now, if you have no interest in stealth or single player, our next title is the free Zero G Sport Echo VR. This wild combination of Rocket League meets rugby will have you floating around in a futuristic arena, slingshotting off your teammates, and punching your opponent in the face, all while trying to get a disc through the goal. Mechanically, this is a hard game to master, but when you do, it is so satisfying. But to be honest, I rather play more of I Expect You to Die, and this sequel gives us just that. It's definitely more of the same as the original, but refined in almost every way. Graphically, the game gets an update. It's longer than the original with deeper storytelling, and the environment and traps are more elaborate. If you enjoy the original or just enjoy escape rooms, this title is a no-brainer. But a lot of us crave more action, and luckily, there's Blade and Sorcery. This physics-based fantasy melee title continues to receive some amazing updates, including a quest release. What was once just a sandbox title with some great combat is slowly becoming a single-player dungeon crawler. But what makes 
this close to a must-have title is all the amazing user-generated content. You could become a Marvel character like Spider-Man or Iron Man, maybe wield the Ten Rings or Thor's hammer, or just decapitate some people with a lightsaber. The Quest Blade and Sorcery Nomad Edition lags behind a little bit, especially because it doesn't have all of these amazing mods, but it's still a really fun option. Now, a title that doesn't require any mods to be amazing is Red Matter 2. The developers have already modified the Unreal Engine enough to get this puzzle title to look absolutely amazing on the Quest 2. This sequel will have you traveling deeper into space, solving a much larger array of puzzles, and battling a multitude of security droids, all while slowly unraveling a deep storyline. Both fans of story-driven adventure titles and the puzzle fans out there should absolutely love this game. And speaking of absolutely loving a game, the spacefaring roguelike Ghost Signal of Solaris story completely blew me away. Rather than getting up close and personal in your VR space battles, you're instead controlling your ship from a third-party view. Combat is highly strategic, forcing you to both maneuver away from enemies and switch from an array of different weapons in order to survive combat. The roguelike nature hands you an array of different power-ups over time, which can make or break each run, and the gameplay loop is just absolutely addictive, and I played nearly six hours straight the first day I got this title. Now about six hours is all you'll get out of the fantastic escape room title I Expect You To Die 2, but it'll be a few short hours of top-notch quality and a multitude of hilarious different ways to die. If you played the original, you'll know you're in for some spy-themed action, but the second game just gets so much better. There's more of an actual storyline, fantastic voice acting from Will Whedon, and I found the puzzles to be the perfect level of challenging. But sometimes we just need to shoot people, and that's why we have games like Contractors. This is another online competitive military style shooter, but what sets it apart, making it absolutely fantastic, is the large range of mods available. You can experience games like Team Fortress 2 and Star Wars Battlefront in VR. The mods are also built right into the game, so you can access them in just a few clicks. So basically, it's a VR shooter that just keeps on giving. But if you're looking for a game that's a large commitment, we have Elite Dangerous. This is an extremely immersive open world space sim. There's quite a learning curve here, and this game can be a serious investment. You'll find it extremely rewarding. Between HOTUS and VR Sport, plus amazing graphics, this is an extremely immersive game. But if that's not your style, you can hunt down some ghosts in Phasmophobia. This four-person co-op ghost hunter is equally terrifying and hilarious. The overzealous, brave member of the group might kick in the door yelling the ghost's name and end up getting themselves or someone else killed. While the coward of the group can stay back in the van, narrating your team's demise. I've had so much fun playing this game, and if you could get past the jump scares, I highly recommend it. But there's more jump scares to come with Jurassic World Aftermath. This beautifully cel-shaded trip through the abandoned Jurassic Park is an excellent and rather terrifying story to behold. Crash land on the island after a pterodactyl attack, and then continuously play cat and mouse with some velociraptors. This can be an extremely intense experience, but there's also moments of Jurassic Park nostalgia and some well-done storytelling. If you enjoy the title, you should definitely pick up the Part 2 DLC, as it definitely has a few more surprises than the original title. Now, since we're talking about quest-exclusive titles, I have to mention In Death Unchained. This roguelite journey through the afterlife remains one of my favorite quest titles. Best in-class archery mechanics, challenging combat and bosses, a large array of horrific enemies, lots of unlockable upgrades, and seasonal content will keep you coming back for more. Now, do not get the PC version of this game. It has been discontinued for quite some time, and the vast majority of the content and all of the new updates are only available for the quest. But let's jump back to RPGs with Skyrim VR. Now, last year, I snubbed this title because for years now, I've just been burnt out on Skyrim. And in truth, if you've played Skyrim before, the VR version doesn't suddenly make it that much better. Now, if you haven't played it before, this is easily the biggest and most robust RPG available in VR. Spending a thousand hours in Skyrim is quite possible, especially when you start tacking on mods that take this game to a whole new level. Extra content, graphical overhauls, upgrades that fix the game's crappy UI, and just so much more. My Skyrim mod folder is currently over 200 gigs. Now the next title on this list may surprise you because it absolutely surprised me. I never expected a puzzle platformer with a mouse protagonist to be so compelling. Excellent storytelling, beautiful environments, tight controls, and challenging puzzles make this a fantastic game. You end up forming a strong bond with Quill, and the only thing holding back this title is the short runtime. There is some replayability with hidden items to find on each level, and I found the storyline compelling enough to play through it more than once, but overall the attention to detail and level of quality are what's sell this game. 
And speaking of quality, we have Iron Man VR. Not only does this game do an amazing job of making you feel like Iron Man, between both the flight and weapon mechanics, it also tells a compelling story and is loaded with action. My adrenaline was pumping from the very beginning when you were ripped out of an airplane, and my excitement skyrocketed the second I saw the Iron Man HUD. Yes, it's a bit repetitive and held back by the PlayStation VR hardware, but this is a total package title. The game's received some nice patches and additional content since release, and if you really enjoy it, there's definitely some re replayability here. Now a title that I actually enjoyed a little bit more but lacks replayability is Vader Immortal. I know this is not everyone's favorite and the storyline is only roughly two hours but you also get a wave shooter style dojo and this is the only time in your life you're going to get up close and personal with Vader. For me personally that's worth the price of admission. Graphically this game looks great. I thought the storyline was a nice tie-in and while it's mechanically simple wielding a lightsaber and using force powers is an absolute blast. If you're a Star Wars fan and fairly new to VR, I highly recommend this game. But if that's not enough action, we have the new four-person co-op zombie shooter, After the Fall. After the Fall is some amazing Left 4 Dead style fun, and I quickly sunk about 20 hours into this game. It's a testament to the gameplay that a title with such little content is still maintaining a player base and has sucked up so much of my time. Where the game goes from here is based on how much additional content they push out, and by next year, it could either be headed towards the graveyard or a must-buy title. Speaking of must-buy titles, we are right on the edge now, and a great example is the story-driven shooter Farpoint. This time-bending journey to an alien world absolutely sucked me in. While it is playable in co-op, I played through it in one single-player sitting. That's right, I was glued to my chair for over five hours straight. Mechanically, as a shooter, this game lacks a bit, especially if you're not using an aim controller, but the fantastic storyline more than makes up for it. But let's switch back the roguelites with Everslot. Everslot is an extremely fast-paced mix between Doom and Diablo. Love. I love the multiplayer mechanics like twisting your wrist to activate a grappling hook or to turn your hand into a cannon. The graphics in this game are top notch, it's highly immersive, and also gives me an adrenaline kick every single time I play. The title's currently in early access, so there's only about one to two hours of single player linear gameplay, and then it turns into procedurally generated dungeon runs, which have you collecting blood to level up. The future roadmap has some really exciting stuff, which will make this title a lot more similar to a Diablo style dungeon crawler. I'm definitely looking forward to that and expect this game to move up the list a few points next year. Now, another newcomer to the list this year is Demio. Demio is a tabletop RPG that people like to compare to Dungeons & Dragons, but it's definitely not the same. The RPG system in Demio is much lighter, but that doesn't take away any of the fun. You get to pick from one of five characters, each with their own unique abilities, jump into one of the three available quests in either single player or multiplayer mode with up to three of your friends, then make your way through three levels of a dungeon, and then take down an epic boss. There's a lot of strategy and cooperation needed to survive, and the random dice rolls help keep things exciting. A single round of gameplay could take one to two hours, and until you learn the ropes, this is a very challenging game. It's also my number one pick for tabletop fans. Now, if the tabletop isn't for you, and Demio's RPG system just isn't robust enough, we have Legendary Tales. This is a four-person co-op RPG dungeon crawler with a lot to love. For starters, the physics-based combat is up there with other titles like Boneworks. To experience that in four-person multiplayer is a rare treat. The game also has fantastic graphics, an arsenal of weapons that drastically impact how you play the game, a gesture-based magic system, and a truly rewarding upgrade system. It's a combination of doing what you want to be better at in the game, like swinging a heavy sword to get stronger, plus assigning points to increase other attributes, and selecting unique skills that will drastically alter your character. For example, in my latest run, I have built a glass cannon mage. I can only take about one or two hits in game before I die, but at the same time, I can constantly rain down hellfire. Plus, I have a magical shield to help defend me. My buddy Soulfox has built an unarmed monk-style character who stuns enemies with palm strikes and can drop the biggest baddie with a flurry of blows. This is an RPG system I always dreamed of, and I already love this title in its current early access state and can't wait for them to release more content. While the content is still a bit limited, I've already managed to rack up 25 hours in this game and I'm still playing. But Legendary Tales is missing storytelling, and the best place to get that in VR is from Lone Echo. Now, besides this title starting off with a slow burn, I love everything else about it. It's some of the best graphics and highest level of immersion you can get from a VR game. The storyline is extremely intriguing, and once you get past that first hour, it has a great pace and lots of surprises along the way. Now, the only game to surpass this in storytelling is the sequel to Lone Echo. Lone Echo 2 is very similar to the original, except most of it has been improved. Graphically, it's looking even
even better. The storyline is even better with a lot more unexpected turns, and they introduce some new mechanics to help keep things fun. I would love to see another sequel and additional games set in this world, but since Meta now owns this studio and they no longer produce PC VR games, I doubt it will happen. Okay, before we jump into those A tier titles, this video is brought to you by VR Rock. VR Rock makes prescription lens inserts for all of your favorite VR headsets, and now they have them for the PlayStation VR 2. So if you've been struggling to get your eyeglasses to fit inside the headset, or you're afraid you might scratch the lens, these can be a great option. They magnetically connect, so they're easy to put on and take right back off. And if you're interested, I have a 10% discount code down in the description and a link to their webpage. Okay, so we've now made it up to A tier titles, and these are some of the best games that VR has to offer. Unless you absolutely hate the genre, you should consider all of these games must plays. Now this tier has fluctuated the most since last year's video, and first up is VR's Fortnite Population One. This battle royale shooter has not only managed to hold on to the majority of its player base, but it's also grown significantly in the last few months as the title's gone free to play, and they also introduced a world building sandbox mode. So it doesn't matter if you're a fan of the class classic last team standing gameplay, or you're looking for something new, this title has you covered with its ever-changing nature. Now, if you prefer single player, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners is still an amazing experience. The world is highly immersive and anxiety inducing. The combat feels amazing and taking down walkers never gets old. Plus there's an interesting storyline and some truly intense moments that keep pulling you back to this game. And another title that kept pulling me back was Star Wars Squadrons. Highly strategic space battles, the iconically immersive world of Star Wars, a lengthy single player campaign, stunning visuals, and some truly competitive online PvP. Squadrons is the full package, even if you're not a Star Wars fan. Now, while dodging proton torpedoes might be pretty intense, it doesn't match the horror of Resident Evil 7. Capcom sure knew how to highlight VR with this title, having a multitude of psychotic individuals get up close and personal with you, having to watch spiders crawl up and down your arms, and just getting a first person view of some truly horrific sights. This is a less action-oriented Resident Evil title, focusing more on immersion and suspense, which makes it absolutely ideal for VR. Similar to our next title, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter 2. It's very much just more of what the original game gave us, but now there's updates to scavenging and weapon creation, plus there's plenty of new ways to dispatch the undead, and the storyline has been expanded. Besides the excellent combat, I also enjoy that these games have the perfect level of scariness. I remain tense throughout my entire gameplay, but not enough to prevent me from wanting to jump back in. But no one's ever been scared by the next title, Beat Saber. Beat Saber has somehow become synonymous with VR itself. Who would have known that slicing blocks with lightsabers to the beat of a song would ever become so popular? Now it's the type of game that only works in VR, which makes it a bit more special, and the gameplay is super easy to pick up, but extremely challenging to master. This gives it an addictive nature from everyone from noob to extreme competitor. But if that's not enough action, we have the half-like shooter Vertigo Remastered. Great graphics, plenty of large open environments, which we rarely see in VR, an unmatched level of creativity, and just an absolutely great single player campaign. It's a little bit on the shorter side at roughly five hours, but definitely a must play for all VR shooter fans. And what Vertigo does for shooters, Astro Bot Rescue Mission does for platformers. Not only does Astro have extremely solid platformer mechanics, it also features enemies and a level design that truly knows how to highlight VR. You'll be dodging enemy attacks with both Astro and your own physical presence, and the title will be dropping you into a lot of exotic worlds. Blast underwater, jump from skyscraper to skyscraper up in the clouds, or even take a roller coaster ride through some lava filled canyons. And when you're done admiring the environments, there's some truly larger than life bosses that you'll have to battle. I'm hoping we'll eventually get a sequel to this title because it's an unmatched VR platformer experience. But again, we need to jump back to the action with VR's Counter Strike, Pavlov. Pavlov is one of the OG VR shooters, and it still remains extremely popular. Featuring gameplay that's a direct clone from Counter Strike, there's also plenty of other official gameplay modes such as the World War II edition, but just like Counter-Strike, there's also countless mods. You can play everything from a Zombies mode, to Grenade Dodgeball, and even Prop Hunt. So basically, Pavlov is a top-notch shooter with the addition of limitless gameplay modes. But sometimes nothing beats the classics, and that's why Resident Evil 4 is so high up on this list. This remake of one of the most popular Resident Evil titles was done phenomenally well. Graphics and sound effects have been reworked, there's full motion controller support for weapon handling, and they've even integrated some new controls into the cutscene. Any true horror or Resident Evil fan should absolutely play this game. The lengthy campaign is filled with a ton of over-the-top moments and plenty of brutal action. But when it comes to action, not much tops Boneworks. 
This experimental physics shooter took the world by storm. To date, no other title has both melee and gun mechanics that can match this title. You could somehow feel the impact of every single stab or swing with a blunt weapon, and the handling of firearms feels absolutely fantastic. Now combine this with an intriguing and truly wacky world, plus unique enemies and experiences, and you have a top-notch title. The arena and sandbox modes offer up a ton of replayability, and it's also great for producing some pretty cool video clips. But now we have some newcomers on the list for 2023, and the first one up is the racing sim Gran Turismo 7. Featuring unmatched graphics, a lengthy campaign with a huge amount of cars to unlock, true to life driving physics, and some highly addictive gameplay. I am not at all a sim fan, and even I found this game irresistible, having to constantly sneak in more and more sessions. But a title that was a lot more my style was Horizon Call of the Mountain. This game easily has some of the best VR graphics available, and it's set in a truly interesting world to explore. The robotic creatures of the Horizon universe look better than ever when they're up close and personal, and this game has some truly amazing boss fights. It may be a little bit too climbing heavy for some, and I wish the overall storyline would have brought more to the Horizon universe, but overall it's an absolutely fantastic VR experience. But if there wasn't enough action in there for you, we have Resident Evil Village. We've traded in some of the overall suspense from Resident Evil 7 and upped the action with battling some werewolf-like creatures. Capcom admitted that this game was made without VR in mind, but it's ported phenomenally well, and as long as you can handle the horror themes, it's some of the best VR gaming you can get. And this finally puts us into the S tier category, which are just essential VR titles, the best of the best, and easily the portion of the video where people will disagree the most. Amazingly, a title done by a single developer has made it up this high, and that game is Vertigo 2. This is 10 plus hours of Half-Life meets Rick and Morty. You're thrown into an insanely large research facility filled with tons of alien creatures and controlled by security robots. Both the combat and creativity in this game are huge standouts, as you'll be unlocking and upgrading a multitude of unique weapons, but also sailing the open seas, portaling your way through different dimensions, choosing sides in an ongoing religious war, and finally asking yourself what the heck is actually going on in this game. It's an absolutely fantastic ride with a 10 plus hour campaign and the option to jump right back in with a new game plus mode. But if a 10 hour campaign isn't enough for you, why not check out 40 plus hours with the RPG Asgard's Draft? This title does so much right, starting with the absolutely gorgeous graphics, utilizing VR to its fullest in both storytelling and mechanically as you're constantly moving between mortal and god mode. There's also a large array of unique pets to unlock and upgrade, and they somehow managed to keep the entire game feeling fresh and new throughout that 40 plus hour campaign. VR is absolutely begging for a sequel to this title, and I hope that happens one day, just like for our next title, Half-Life Alex. Featuring both the best graphics and unmatched production value of any VR game, Half-Life Alex is a clear standout title. Not only is there excellent combat, there's also an intriguing storyline set in a beloved IP, extremely immersive environments, and some memorable moments that'll stick with you forever. Once you've completed the campaign a few times, you could also check out the countless number of mods available from Steam's Workshop. There's a Bioshock Return the Rapture one that I always recommend that uses assets from the original game and is absolutely amazingly well done. Now that right there finishes off today's list, but I do have a few more things I want to go over. I know there's a few fan favorite games out there that I didn't mention, like H. 3, Gorilla Tag, and even Jet Island. I tried to play these games but really struggled to get into them and don't feel like I've given them enough time to actually score them. And just about every single title on today's list I've played from beginning to end. Additionally, I know people tend to have issues with the scoring system itself, but as you've noticed, it kind of matches school grades. Anything under a 65 is a complete fail and not worth mentioning. For a game to score somewhere between a 1 and a 4, it would just need to be completely broken, and a 5 or 6 would also be pretty damn terrible. And my ratings are based off of three main criteria. The fun factor, or rather how enjoyable the game is to play, the value on the title based on replayability and the overall cost of the game, and finally the quality of the title itself. Is it a polished release free of bugs? Are there some glaring issues the developers should have addressed beforehand? And how does everything like the graphics and voice acting stack up? Now, people usually mention mods down in the comments, which I separate out into completely separate videos. If I included everything like Alien Isolation and the Cyberpunk mod, this video would be twice as long. So keep this in mind before you stop blasting me in the comments, but I still really want to hear your feedback. At least let me know what your number one VR title is down in the comments. And that was today's video brought to you by my dad, Mateo311. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. Consider subscribing. Consider subscribing. And consider subscribing. Consider subscribing. Consider subscribing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys on next time. We'll see you guys on next time.